Welcome back to this week's Organism of the Week. There are about 15 species of cranes in the world, but out of all of them, the whooping crane might have the best story. The whooping crane is the tallest bird in North America. It stands at about 5 feet tall, with a wingspan of about 7 feet. It also has a trachea that's 5 feet long. The trachea curls inside the sternum to fit that extra length, and the length helps the birds to make the loud whooping call that gives them their name. This sound can be heard from over five miles away, but it's not common to hear. The whooping crane is one of the rarest birds in North America. Still, there are a lot more today than we had back in the 1940s, when the population dipped down to less than 20 individuals. Whooping cranes were once popular targets for sport hunting and meat. They also rely heavily on open prairie and wetlands for migration and habitat, where they feed on aquatic plants and animals. But these habitats have been shrinking as humans have been building towns and redirecting rivers. In about 70 years, from the 18 to 1900s, a combination of hunting and habitat loss drove whooping cranes from about 1,400 individuals down to less than 30. When a hurricane in Louisiana killed nearly a quarter of those in 1940, conservationists decided to take action. They captured a few of the wild whooping cranes and began captive breeding programs. It wasn't easy. People struggled for years to figure out how to breed whooping cranes successfully, but it was difficult to raise chicks that would survive. During the first 25 years, they were only able to introduce 10 new chicks into the wild. They began giving chicks and eggs to the other North American crane, the sandhill crane, to help raise them. The only problem was that the whooping crane chicks imprinted on their sandhill crane foster parents and started to believe that they were sandhill cranes. They wouldn't mate with other whooping cranes, which meant that the wild population still wasn't growing. An ornithologist in the 1970s developed a new technique, using humans with whooping crane costumes to raise the chicks. Human handlers would wear a white suit with a hand puppet designed to look like a whooping crane and use this to feed and teach the chicks, even showing them how to hunt and how to be alert and watch for predators. It seems crazy, but it actually worked. Whooping cranes learned to recognize markings on the whooping crane puppet and looked for these same markings when finding a mate. The next problem came when it was time to teach the chicks to migrate. In 2001, an ornithologist wearing the whooping crane costume flew an ultralight airplane along the migration route, and birds followed him from Wisconsin to Florida. We continued doing this for 15 years, but unfortunately, the plane following birds aren't really reproducing in the wild. They lay eggs, but the chicks rarely survive. Ornithologists think it's because they were raised by humans. Even humans in a crane costume can't teach a chick everything it needs to know. But there is hope. Between habitat restoration and these dedicated reintroduction efforts, there are now around 660 individual whooping cranes in the wild. We're making more effort to let wild parents raise their chicks, and so far it seems to be going well. There's a lot of work to do to really bring whooping cranes back so they can thrive, but we'll have to let the whooping cranes do some of that work too. That's all I have for you today. Remember to stop by the museum this week to pick up a whooping crane bio card. Next week, we're talking about the American Badger. So send in your questions and we'll answer them in our video. We'll see you then.